What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, this is episode number 17 and we start today's episode off with an away game away at Villarreal here as we travel to the east of Spain to take on this team and this is going to be one of the teams I feel will be very difficult to play against this year. Now obviously a few years ago they did actually have relegation to the Segunda Division in Spain but last year in real life they finished in 6th but they have actually made a very poor start this season in the game, they're sitting in 17th place with only one one point accumulated from four and of course we've had uh, sorry one point accumulated from four games and we've accumulated eight points for a possible 12 and sit in the top half of the table so with no goals conceded and a very very strong start considering how poor this team is uh, if you missed the last two episodes and you're wondering why our team is so very poor go back and watch it and you'll see exactly why we have no money whatsoever um yeah we're a very poor team we still made a good start and you know coming into this game we probably would have been considered the favorites to be honest which is a real surprise but I did know that it would be a very difficult game because Villarreal do have some very decent players and the first chance would fall to them in the sixth minute as Chani turns around a couple of players and finds Espinosa. He plays it back into Chani, back to Espinosa. They keep holding the ball very nicely. Villarreal just could not get the ball off them and as Chani Sports comes forward here, he uh, smashes the ball into the bottom corner and makes it Villarreal 1, Racing Santander nil. So unfortunately for us, we did fall behind in the eighth minute. It is our first goal conceded in La Liga and it was a really routine goal as well. My defending was very poor you don't need to tell me that it's just one of the, those things you know when you play on legendary and you're using quite a poor team and the AI players are passing the ball around you do get frustrated quite easily you you charge out of position try and win the ball back and if you don't get there you're exploited at the back and nine times out of ten they'll score so 1-0 to Villarreal uh, Saiz starting for the first time uh, one of our academy players had this volley which went over the bar and in the 42nd minute Villarreal came forward again here the youngster Vieto crossing the ball to the far post and Uche's header finds the back of the net. So Villarreal 2, Racing Santander 0. It's a very, very good header and a lovely celebration as well. But unfortunately for us, it was very poor defending again. And it's kind of frustrating to know that the two goals we conceded this season so far, the only two goals came in the same game and they both could have been avoided had my defending been better. But still 2-0. On the 60th minute mark though, Saiz comes forward here, gets a little bit lucky and shoots, but the shot is saved by the goalkeeper in the near post and turn behind so the 16 year old making his first start for us almost grabbing a goal back there and in the 26th minute Mariano comes forward and takes it around the last man Pantic with a lovely fake shot he shoots but it's a wonderful save by the goalkeeper to turn it behind for a corner and it was how the game would finish as well so it's our first defeat of the new season here in La Liga and I did say in the first couple episodes you know despite going four games without conceding a goal despite picking up two wins from four you know and, and having a very good start we were going to start to lose games eventually obviously and I wasn't surprised that this game was the one that ended in defeat because Villarreal do have some decent players and I wasn't surprised to see them use those players and get the win so very frustrated but we had to expect that and we then take on Athletic Bill Bow for the second of three games in today's episode. Now this game is very interesting because the game actually recognises Athletic Bill Bow as Racing Santander's rivals. Now I don't know why that is because as far as I'm aware they're not rivals, they don't have any kind of rivalry whatsoever but the game seems to recognize them as rivals if you would have seen last year I tried to sign one of Fleck Bill Bowers players and they basically said you're not taking them because you're a rival team so yeah this, this game is actually a bit of a rivalry and I guess it's kind of nice as well because as uh, far as I'm aware, Racing Santander don't really have too many fierce rivalries. So I guess during this series, even though in real life it may not be considered a derby, this will be our derby game. This will be our rival. And I guess if you want to look at it this way, Athletic Bilbao have a club policy where they try and only sign players from the Basque region. And we, of course, are only signing Spanish players or players eligible to play for Spain. So I guess you could call this the club policy derby. It's not a very good derby name, is it? But even so, it's a derby regardless. They're our rivals, believe it or not and it's going to be a big game for us. So we take them on here at home, El Sardinero, and the first chance fell to them, and Rico almost opened the scoring as well in the 17th minute. He had a free header there, and he somehow managed to head the ball over from four yards. So big miss by Mikel Rico, and it's still nil-nil. In the 14th minute, De Marcos goes down the right-hand side for Athletic Bilbao, who finds Gomez. He crosses the ball in, and Benat has a free header, but it's a good stop by Mario Fernandez as he turns the ball behind for a corner. So still nil-nil, and from that resulting corner, it's Suzeta who will eventually cross the ball in, 
He looks for Rico on the edge of the area, who heads it back in. It comes to Benat, it falls to Rico, who shoots, and it just trickles wide of the post and goes behind for a goal kick. So, very fortunate the ball didn't go into the bottom corner there, as I thought it was going to. So, still nil-nil. And in the 34th minute, Buena Casa takes on his man here, loses the ball, but it comes to Kiko. Kiko then chips it back inside to Concha. Our 18-year-old shoots, but it's a very good stop by the Athletic Bilbao goalkeeper, and it's turned behind for a corner. And from that corner, it is Kiko who crosses the ball in. Alban Toza wins the header and scores his first goal for the club as well. We sign him on a pre-contract. He's our highest rated player at 71. And the big, strong, powerful centre-back heads it in and makes it 1-0. So I mentioned last year, we, we weren't going to be able to sign too many good players. But he's a very decent player for this team at least. And he makes it 1-0. So 1-0 in the new rivalry, the newfound rivalry if you will. And we do indeed take the lead. But in the 84th minute here, Rico finds his man down the left-hand side. He whips in a long ball. Adariz flicks it on and unfortunately Albizua makes it 1-1. So Athletic Bilbao equalised with 5 minutes on the clock. It's very frustrating to know he conceded a goal for a long ball. That's very, very poor indeed. And unfortunately the game did indeed finish as a 1-1 draw. So disappointed we couldn't get back to winning ways. That's now no win in 4 games. But... At the end of the day, you know, it's, it's uh, only one goal in four games as well. But at the end of the day, we knew it was going to be difficult regardless. It's it's just frustrating to know that we were five minutes away from a, a win in our first derby game, if you will. And we threw it away with some poor defending through me, to be honest. So 1-1 one, one the final score. Disappointing, but again, it's it's a point. It's not too bad. And at the end of the day, you know, you've got to look at the positives. We've made, you know, despite losing that game to Villarreal, we've only lost once in uh, five games. It's been a very, very decent start. And so we then take on Espanyol for the third and final game of today's episode episode here, away from home, a look at the league table, sorry, six games, even not five games, let's look at the league table here, eight, uh, eighth position, two wins, three draws, only one loss, you know, only uh, three goals conceded, you got to say, that's not, that's not a bad start, you know, considering how poor this team is, so, you know, it's, it's not been too bad at all, and you got to look at the positives, but uh, still, we did indeed take on Espanyol, and as you can see by their side, they are sitting higher above us in the table, they're in uh, sixth place, I think, and they've made a very decent start as well, so, we knew it would be a very difficult game, and I would have to make some changes as well. Uh, Mariano coming in, uh, Moreno coming in as well, or Fila coming in. Because of the fitness problems, as per usual, when you're playing with a low-rated team, usually your players do have pretty low stamina. So, had to make a few changes, but the first chance would fall to us in the 50th minute here as Kiko's on the ball. Plays a lovely through ball into the path of Moreno, but his shot is well saved by the goalkeeper, Kiko Casilla, and it is still scoreless. And as Casilla, the goalkeeper, kicks the ball forward here. Andriawa, number 24, loses out in the air. And as it comes to uh, Canas here, he ends up giving the ball away with Hector Bellerino right back, making a storming challenge and playing a brilliant through ball into Mariano. Quick little back heel to Kiko, and well, the less said about that shot, the better. So, still scoreless, but a couple of early chances after the uh, second half restart. In the 67th minute, though, Espanyol almost took the lead here, with uh, Tierra's shot being well saved by the goalkeeper, Mario Fernandez. Superb stop, and it goes out for a corner. And in the 71st minute, it was still 0-0. It looked as though that was the game was going to finish, but as we flick the ball forward here, Mariano is free because Espanyol pushed way too many bodies forward. He takes on the last man and puts him on the floor as he rides the slide challenge, and Mariano scores his first goal of the season, getting his first start of the season as well, in place of Buena Casa on loan from Juventus, who was a bit too tired for the game. He makes it 1-0. We celebrate. All the team come forward for it. Not a real surprise because it's going to be another shock three points here, away from home at Espanyol. It's a very very nice finish. As I went forward there, I thought I was going to completely mess it up, but I was genuinely beginning to shake, so I was like, this is such a big moment. One of the best chances of the game we'll get here. We need to end this streak without wins and make it our first win in five, and thankfully for us, we did because as Mariano scores that goal, it was the last chance of the game, and it does finish as an Espanyol nil, harassing Santander, or uh, Santander one result. So, Santander winning the game, it's another win for us. It's our third win of the season out of seven games. That is pretty Really impressive with this team and yeah only one defeat so far in seven games as well it's it's crazy but I cannot believe the start to this season we've made and again I will reiterate it's not gonna be like this for the whole season like we will eventually begin to sort of um you know, drop a lot of points, go on a big streak without wins, because I'm, I'm just confident that will be the case, considering how poor this team is, as you can see the squad report here. I think the only reason, really, we've made such a strong start is because at the start of the season in career mode, like, anything can happen, do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much, um, so much, I don't know how to explain it, really, there's just so much variety in terms of the results you'd expect to happen at the start of every season in career mode, so that's probably why we made such a, an encouraging start, but uh, still, here is indeed a squad report, you can see how the players are doing. Obviously, like last season, uh, sorry, unlike 
class season. Not too many players to really keep an eye on, to be honest. But still worth looking at Marion Saez, uh, Marion Schwarzer, and also uh, Sergio Buenacasa as well. And he's a look at the league table as well. Uh, we're in fifth place with 12 points. Very encouraging start. And i got to say, I did not predict this, but I'm very happy we are there so far. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like because it is much appreciated. And of course, it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Club and Country very soon.